Hi. In this video, we'll be learning about selecting by ID with CSS. So to recap, we've seen the general format for the CSS rule, selector, followed by curly braces, followed by property value, property value for every property that you want to style for that selector. The selector defines which HTML elements this rule applies to. And there's many kinds of selectors. We've seen selecting by tag, so that this rule applies to all H1 elements. We've seen selecting by class, so that this rule applies to all HTML elements with a specific class. And now we'll be introducing selecting by ID. So selecting by ID makes it so that this rule applies to the single HTML element with a specific ID. Now this is very different from tag and class, because when we selected by tag, it applied to every element with that tag. When we selected by class, it applied to every HTML element with that class. But when we select by ID, it applies to only a single HTML element. It applies to the one element with that specific ID. So how do we have an ID on an HTML element? What does that mean? Well, introducing the ID attribute. So just like class, ID is an attribute that we can add to an HTML tag. Now the difference is that the class attribute styled a group of tags, but the ID attribute styles one specific tag. So we add an ID to a tag when we want to style that specific element. So for example, say we had a simple H1 element that said code HS. We could add the ID logo to that H1 tag, and this sets the ID attribute of this tag to be logo. Now an important note is that the ID of an element should be unique. There should be only one tag on any given web page with a specific ID. So if we were making a web page with this H1 tag that had the ID logo, this should be the only tag that has the ID logo. It is very specific to this tag. So when we're writing CSS rules that select by ID, we are writing a rule that applies to a single HTML element. This rule applies to the single element with the ID logo. And to select by ID, we simply put a hashtag in front of the ID name. So we say hashtag logo, and then we define all the styles we want for that ID. So this rule says that the HTML element with the ID logo will have a font size of 60 pixels, and it will be red. Now just like class names, ID names cannot have spaces, and they cannot start with a number. So both of these ID names would not be valid. The first one starts with a number, and the second one has a space. So to fix it, just put the number at the end and replace spaces with a dash. So logo2 is a valid name, and large-logo is a valid ID name. So to see an example of this, here we have two H1 tags, CodeHS and learn to code and only one of them has the ID logo. So if we were to add a CSS rule that styled the ID logo with a font family of Georgia, font size of 80 pixels, font style of italic, and a color of blue, it only applies to the CodeHS H1 tag. It only applies to the tag with the ID logo. Now an important note here is that ID overrides the style of both class and tag in the case of a conflict. ID is the most specific type of style. So on the spectrum of CSS styling, at the least specific we have selecting by tag. If we write a CSS rule that selects several elements by tag, that is a very general rule. Then we have selecting by class. If we write a CSS rule that selects by class, that is a bit more specific, that is applying to a smaller group of tags. And if we select by ID, that is the most specific, that applies to only one tag. So a rule that selects by ID will overwrite rules that select by class or by tag. So to see an example of this, suppose we had three rules. One rule selects all P tags and gives them the color green. Another rule selects all tags with the class alert and gives them the color red. And the last one selects the HTML element with the ID logo and gives it a color of blue. Suppose we had this HTML element on our web page, a P tag with the text hello. What color do you think this element will be? If you said green, you would be correct. The first CSS rule selects this P tag and gives it the color green. Now what if we added the class alert to this tag? Now what color would it be? Well now we're going to have a color of red, and this is because the class style overrides the tag style. Even though it's selected by the P tag, it's also selected by the alert class, and the alert class will overwrite the green color and give it a red color. Now what if we added on top of that the ID logo? Now what color would it be? Well in this case, the tag would be blue. 
and this is because the ID style overrides both the tag style and the class style. ID is the most specific, so in case of a conflict, in case of several rules all applying to the same element, the ID rule takes the highest precedence. Now, suppose there were no style conflicts. If the P only set the color, the class only set the size, and the ID only set the font style, now there's no conflicts, so all three styles will actually apply together. There's no conflicts, so all three are able to be represented on the resulting web page. So let's see this in the editor. So here we have a simple web page with two H1 tags. One says code HS, and the other one says learn to code. And right now we just have one CSS rule. It selects all H1 tags and gives them the color red. So this is selecting at the tag level. So if we run this, we should see code HS, learn to code, both in red. Now what we want to do is we want to use the ID and the class to give these more specific styles that apply to just this tag or just this tag. So for example, maybe we want to have all tags with the class code to have a font that looks like code. So to do that, we could select all HTML elements with the class code and give them a font family of courier. Awesome. Now see, the color still applies. There's no conflict here. If we were to also say that the color should be black, now that has been overwritten. The class style overwrites the tag style. Now let's style the logo. We want the logo to be very big and fancy and stand out. So to select just that tag, to select just the logo, I will select hashtag logo for the ID logo. And let's give it a font size of 80 pixels. Let's give it a color of blue. Let's give it a font family of Georgia and a font style of italic. Awesome. So now the ID style overwrote the tag style. And we can see even if we added the class code to this tag, it would not be modified because the logo overwrites everything that the code does. The font family is overwritten and the color is overwritten. Now lastly, maybe we want to style the description such that its font size is a little bit smaller. So what we can do there is select the description, give it a font size of 15 pixels. Great. So that is how we can use the ID attribute to select elements by ID and style them. Now it's your turn.